This video is for translators who are asked to prepare a certified translation for a client. Certified translations are often vital statistics documents like a birth or death or marriage certificate. Sometimes they're college transcripts or a high school diploma. They may be foreign credentials like a voter's ID card or a driver's license or a passport. Um, we also get court orders and wills and other legal documents that need to be translated and certified by the translator. And there are different ways to do it. Everybody has their own style. And in the United States, this isn't a type of translation that's regulated. But when you get a request, it's important to know where it's going because different recipients or end users will have different expectations. And so for this example, I'm going to use a Mexican birth certificate that's being translated for USCIS. And I'll start out by going to the USCIS website and looking and seeing what they say about certified translations. This website here showed me that they ask for a certification statement which reads something like this. Certification by translator, I, and so I'm going to fill in my information, Marco Hansen, certify that I am fluent in the English and Spanish languages, and that the attached document is an accurate translation of the document attached entitled birth certificate of, and then I will make up a name because I am using an anonymous document here. So signature, I'll leave a space for myself to sign it, um, and then the date today is for 19, 2017. I don't know about you, but I don't like the default in Windows of putting a space after each paragraph, so the first thing I do on a new document is remove space after paragraph. I guess this could all be underlined. And after you've done a few of these, you'll develop your own certification statement that you use in general, and mine is fleshed out with more details about my credentials and experience, but if this is what USCIS is asking for, then that's a good place to start. Um, if you don't like sharing your address on things that you're sending out, maybe it's your home address, uh, then you can use a P.O. box. Uh, you might also put other contact information on here, like your email and phone number. Um, but whatever the organization is asking for, it's a good place to start um, with giving them that information. Um, I'm going to save this before I go any further. Save it to my desktop. Now, after this point, I like to put a placed image of the document that I'm translating so that even though it's sent in accompanying uh, the original or a full-size copy, the person reviewing the translation can also compare and make sure that you're talking about the same document. So here's my anonymous birth certificate where I've just blurred out the personal information but it's an actual Mexican birth certificate and so I'll put that down underneath the certification statement and then I will go on to the next page to start the translation. I have a nice wide screen so I can see both at once um, but if you're working on a smaller laptop screen you'll probably want to uh, make your document full width by zooming in and then go to view split and on the top half of the screen you can put the document that you're translating from maybe zoom in even closer so you can see that fine print and then in the bottom half of the screen uh, show your page where you're translating to so in this case I would begin by giving a brief uh, parenthetical in square brackets describing the page itself and you could say something like document features um, decorative frame of stylized dragon with 
background watermark showing CO of Mexico and then I like to include the text in the seal which here is United Mexican States after that I see that the seal appears here again at the top followed by two different kinds of barcode and a logo and a gold foil emblem so since there are five elements that are going across I'm going to insert a table with five spaces um, make the lines disappear no borders here and in the first one I'll say seal of Mexico and again the text that comes after that is United Mexican States and the next one in parentheses or square brackets I'll put barcode and then whatever the number is that's under there has been blurred out so I don't know anymore and next I'll say QR code that's this type of square code and then next I will describe um, gold foil emblem or logo of some type and then up here I see a small um, number code number of some kind and I'm going to use my control left bracket uh, shortcut to type that in 4544 and it looks like um, I don't know you can't actually see it because I've reduced this image for privacy so that represents the number up there and then CD MX I'm going to use my control right bracket shortcut to enlarge it make the MX bolder and I see that that's an abbreviation or a, a logo for Ciudad de Mexico so I'll type that underneath there all caps um, as Mexico City unbold then underneath we have uh, birth certificate right justified control R is the shortcut control B to make it bold control right bracket to make it larger birth certificate uh, every translator has their own standards for how much they want their translation to conform to the original and so that's up to you in large part as long as the person receiving the translation is able to figure out um, what foreign language text goes with what English text or whatever the target language is I see that this next section has one two three four five six seven eight um, columns going across so I'll insert a table with eight columns and I'll leave those uh, visible and all the way across everything is has a label on top that's bold so I'll select it all control B I'll make the text a little smaller it looks like about 10 points and I'll hit control E to center all the words in there and then I'll type my translations um, I use a state for entidad because um, almost all of the entidades in Mexico I know from experience are actually states and that's the closest e English equivalent um, delegation um, you can use delegacion as delegation it's, a, it's an administrative division uh, juzgado I usually translate as court um, I like a certificate for acta uh, year type date of filing that I use for fecha de registro and then underneath unbolded we have the numbers more shortcut shortcuts that you can learn the faster this part goes um, certificate that's a recognized acronym in English so I'll just keep the same one for not available not applicable I'm going to 
move this over so I can get data filing back into a single line. And then that's blurred out. Um, I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but underneath we have a very small line of microprint. So I'm going to use my control left bracket shortcut to say microprint line, and then I'll just type it once. It says registro civil, and I use vital statistics as the closest English equivalent for that. Okay, moving on down, we have a series of boxes um, with a vertical column on the left. I see one, and then an irrelevant space, two, three. So I'm going to go with a three by three row by two column table here. Three by two, and I'll make this narrow. And here on the left, we have the uh, registrant, the parents, and the grandparents as um, columns of a single letter wide. So I'm going to center this text here and bold it, and then type in a single letter at a time. Uh, registrant. Y to get it back if you accidentally delete. Then I'll copy and paste parents down here and add and grandparents above that. Then within the registrant block, I see we have capital N name and no colon and then a couple spaces and the name here. And then because we are inside of a box, we can't use tab inside of a table here. But 8 point is really too small. I like to stick with 12 point whenever possible just for legibility. And so genero, gender, male, was presented, uh, presented, filed, I'll use presented. And I'm keeping the same capitalization when possible. Alive. Date of birth. Not shown. Birth. Anonymous here. Parents. So again, we want to get back up to 12 points, so control right bracket. Name of father. And then for this next one, I see that Genero lines up with Edad, and so I'm going to scroll up far enough that I can see where I put that last um, gender up above. And I'll line this up. Two spaces. Age 32. Nationality Mexican, all uppercase. Now I see that the information about the mother is very similar in format to the father, so I'm going to shift up arrow. Control C to copy the father's information, Control V to paste the mother's information, and then, oops, you probably already caught this. I accidentally left that in Spanish, so let me fix both of these, father and mother. The mother is 27 years old. Nationality stays the same. Okay, now going down to the grandparents, there will probably be less information. Here we have the... 12 points, paternal grandfather. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys and shift to select that. And underneath, put paternal grandmother. Just change the letters that are different. And then using my shift and up arrow and home key, I'm selecting that again. Going down here, copying and pasting, and just changing the first letter, paternal Internal. Um, hitting Control S to save. Got to keep saving as you go along. Um, I see that down here there's the convention of adding hyphens, which you see on a lot of Spanish language documents uh, when a name is missing to cross out that area. Um, down here we have a whole section that's full of hyphens because it's not being used. Uh, if you want to, you can reproduce those. I've decided that it's uh, pointless, that none of the English-speaking recipients will um, recognize 
that is significant and we'll be just as happy if you left it out. So I'm going to skip down to this area where there are three uh, blocks going across. Insert. Some people use uh, text boxes. I feel that tables are much more flexible and useful. So I'm going to adjust these a little bit and then select the whole box by uh, left clicking on it and going to no borders so that it remains invisible. And now I have to translate. If this is the first time I've seen this type of document, I'd be translating from scratch. So let me just wing it here. This certification is an extract of the record whose information is specified above and that is issued electronically. Oh no, and that is signed electronically. and by hand as per or according to or based on articles capital that lies out in English 48 of the civil code of the federal district and article 13 we repeat the word article in English even though you don't in Spanish section BII of the regulations, I'll put this in front of the vital statistics regulations of the federal district here in Mexico City. So might translate that differently. I feel that this is accurate and complete and yet reads more naturally in English than a stricter verbatim translation might. And then for the signature block we have uh, Ciudad C is a Mexican document, the Ciudadano, the citizen judge, central judge of the Distrito Federal. The citizen judge of the, the central citizen judge of vital statistics of the federal district. I've blurred out enough of this that I'm not sure if that uh, is saying that this is Judge A or if that's part of another sentence, but this is just an overview. This is not a detailed translation that's going to be going out to any clients, so good enough. Now we're at 12 point font, but this is uh, significantly smaller here in the seal, so I'm going to go down to 10 points and indicate that this is a seal. I think it was probably originally a rubber stamp, but in the electronic version, it's um, just cut and pasted onto there. So I'll call it a seal. Uh, center, all caps, government of the federal district. And then we have a circular seal of Mexico, which says in fine print all the way around it, United Mexican States. Then Dirección General, I like to use General Office of Vital Statistics. And then Certification has been spread out, and that's easy enough to represent by just hitting space between each one. Don't have to do that, but I like matching it when I can. Control E to Center, Control B to Bold, Control U to Underline, and then type Signature. And the signature is blurred out here, but I know that um, I would represent it like the signature in brackets. Don't try to figure out what the name says, whether or not you can read it. Just put the signature. That's good enough. And then whoever receives it can look at the signature and try to figure it out for him or herself. Now, this isn't visible, but there's a date um, up here. 
And then down here is uh, something called um, a digital signature, digital code. It's a string of hundreds of characters that if I hadn't blurted out, I would have to be retyping right now. And so I just made my job easier for the purpose of this video. Coming down here, control E to center, caps lock. Um, licenciado, I like to put at the end and call it a licensed professional because it may be an attorney, but it may be a licenciatura in another field. So I will type the name Antonio Badierna Luna and then put licensed professional because that's where you expect to see this kind of title, if at all, in English. Caps lock off, we're still centered. Control left bracket to make smaller text. To verify the validity of the contents of this copy, I'm going to add a comma in the English for readability. Um, visit the web page, control B for bold, HTTP key, consejería, and of course you leave this in the original Spanish because it's an actual URL. Don't try to translate that or it won't get them anywhere. Now, uh, Word is going to turn it into a hyperlink as soon as you move on. You don't want that because in the original it's not a hyperlink. It's not blue. It's not underlined. So just before you go anywhere, I'll say Control Z and the hyperlink will disappear. Oop, did it again. Control Z, disappeared. Now down at the bottom I see on the far left is some kind of a decal that says uh, Registro Civil. Um, so I'm going to hit Control L to get over there, and it's pretty large print. I'm going to make it statistics. And then over on this side, there is a number, um, which is blurred out, so I'll just uh, represent it like that. So I'm going to save. Uh, re remove the split by clicking View, Remove Split, and then zoom out to get a look at the whole thing. I might say I don't want it to go onto a third page, and so I'm going to remove these extra spaces here um, and try to fit it all onto two pages. This is up to you, depending on your style. To make it smaller, I'm going to have to select this text in here and reduce it in size too. Footer, insert, page numbers. Bottom of the page, uh, plain numbers, those are fine. I don't need an extra space here. Let's center this. And then I would proof the whole thing on the screen, go back, maybe open up a PDF window side by side with my with my Word window and go back through and proofread it real carefully. Your spell check might work when it correctly detects the language. Um, whenever you have two languages mixed together, such as with place names and unfamiliar people's names, if the spell check is looking for English at this point, like down here with Badierna, it'll underline that. Common Hispanic names will be recognized by current versions of Word. And everything else looks good, so at this point I would uh, print it up and check it one more time. If you have a uh, letterhead for your company, your logo, this is a good time to add it. Um, if you have a certification stamp or seal, you can add that. Um, but print it up and then sign it and scan it. Save a PDF of the document. Your customer might just want it as a PDF. If they want it as the hard copy, then you can deliver that to them by uh, mail or pickup or uh, whatever means you prefer. And straighten this up. I like things to look neat and orderly. And the key is to find out who it's going to and then research what their standards are, what they're looking for, and make sure that that certified translation is prepared in a way that will be accepted by that receiver. Some organizations like the U.S. Passport Office require them to be notarized. It's on their website. And so if you give somebody a certified translation for a passport, and you haven't found out that it has to be notarized and you haven't put a notarization statement under your certification and taken it and signed it in front of a notary public, then it won't be accepted and it'll cause everybody more problems. Um, if you're preparing a certified translation for a university, some of them will 
take one like this, like I'm showing you on the screen now, of a transcript or diploma, while others require um, not just a certified translation, but also a foreign um, credentials evaluation service. And so that's a more advanced and in-depth review. And if you can find that out in advance, then you can tell your clients and you'll be able to point them in the right direction. So thank you for following along. I hope this has been useful. And uh, please uh, click on our website link below if you'd like more information.